When we're capturing an image of something in the real world, it has a very exact place in space. Here this plant is standing on the table. It's not inside the table or on the planet Jupiter. If we want to get a picture of it, we just get a camera close to it and snap the shutter button. But when working with virtual experiments, moving the camera might not be enough. Different data features might be located directly on top of each other. One data set might be measured in centimeters and another in meters. The ground could even be pointing sideways. Luckily, there's a method for dealing with these issues that's universal across all computer graphics tools. All computer graphics software stores information about geometry in two categories, a transformation and geometry attributes. A transformation is a permanent set of attributes that describe an object's position, orientation, and size. For instance, let's say we have a donut. A donut is an example of a geometrical shape called a torus. If we put the donut into our virtual coordinate system, you can see that the center of the donut right now is not at the origin, but at 505. That means the center of the donut is shifted five units from the origin in the x-axis and five units from the origin in the z-axis. That's what we call a translation from the origin. We have translated the donut's position from its starting place at the origin. A translation can occur along just one axis, on two axes, or in three axes. Translation requires you to define three values for x, y, and z, even if some of the values are zero. In fact, the computer by default stores a translation of 0, 0, 0 when the object is at the origin. The second attribute in a transformation is its rotation, which establishes an object's orientation. When I rest the donut here on the table, the rotation values around its x, y, and z axes are all zero. But if I stand the donut up on its side, I've now rotated it by 90 degrees around the x axis. Now, when I turn an object in the real world, it's mostly rotating around the place that I'm grabbing it. But what if I'm grabbing it from a position far away? Now the same rotation puts the donut in a very different location. All geometric objects in the computer have a pivot point. This is the position at the center of the rotation. When I was using the tongs, my pivot point was far away from the donut. Usually the pivot point is assumed to be at the origin of the scene. But when I stand the donut up in place here, I'm actually choosing the pivot point to be at the base of the donut. If my pivot point were at the origin, a 90 degree rotation would actually make this donut fly into the air and land five units up a vertical surface. Finally, the last transformation attribute is called the scale. Scale determines the size of the object. By default, the scale of an object is actually one because it describes a multiplier on the object's initial size because any size multiplied by one is that original size, a default value of one means the size won't change. But for instance, if I compress this donut along the y-axis to about half of its original height, we get a scale value of 0.5. Something that is difficult to do in the real world, but easy to do with computer graphics, is to shrink or grow an object. You do this by changing all three scale values at the same rate. So here we have the full transformation for our donut. I've already pointed out that this is dependent on the donut's pivot point, but it's also important to keep in mind that the order of operations matters. For instance, if I translate by 5 and rotate by 90 degrees, this donut ends up in a very different place than if I take another donut and translate it by 5 and then rotate it by 90 degrees. Even the order of rotations matters. You can see that if I rotate this donut by 90 degrees around its z-axis and then 90 degrees about its y-axis, it ends up with a very different orientation than if I rotate this donut around its y-axis and then around its z-axis. As I mentioned before, all computer graphics geometry has a transformation describing its translation, rotation, and scale. But often there are other values needed to describe how we want to alter a shape. These extra values are called geometry attributes. A torus naturally has two geometry attributes that define what it looks like. A ring radius that determines how big the hole in the middle is, and a tube radius that determines how pudgy the torus is. 
However, we can add new geometry attributes as well. For instance, we can add a geometry attribute for how lumpy the torus is, or we can add one for how twisty the torus is. The key thing to keep in mind is that these attributes are different on every object, but the transformation is the same on every object. Using these different types of attributes, we can now arrange all the pieces of our soy plant in the appropriate places. We can even add a geometry attribute to determine what spot in the growth cycle we want to investigate. Computer graphics are so much more flexible than objects in the real world, and we can do anything we want with them. This is fantastic when trying to illustrate some abstract ideas, but it comes at the cost of needing to be careful about how we describe geometry, or we can end up with a crazy mess. Monitoring how rotations stack up in 3D space isn't just important for computer graphics, but also for pilots. If a pilot points their aircraft straight up, their navigation systems can go into what's called gimbal lock, where two of the three axes of rotation line up with each other and effectively become the same. This can cause all kinds of crazy behavior. It nearly ruined the Apollo 11 moon landing. In computer graphics, this issue can be solved using quaternions. Quaternions are a mathematical concept which describes orientation more continuously by using imaginary numbers. 